It's Sunday, the 26th of February. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and an important update on the tragic loss of the Guardian Flight PC-12 aircraft Friday night out of Reno, Nevada in icing conditions. Bruce Landsberg from the NTSB just concluded a briefing, a press briefing in Reno regarding this crash. And the, the important update is the aircraft did experience an in-flight breakup. They found that the when they found the aircraft... When they, when they go to, to these accident investigations, the first thing they do is look to find what they call the four corners of the aircraft, the two wingtips, the nose, and the tail. Well, in this case, they found that the right outboard portion of the wing was missing, as well as the entire horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Remember, the Platus PC-12 is a um, T-tail configuration. The horizontal tail is located on top of the rudder to improve its off-field uh, capability and keep the horizontal tail from getting smashed up by kicked up by rocks from the propeller so in the during the loss of control of the aircraft where it had the very high rate of descent is when they lost parts of the aircraft so typically what happens is Either you over G the aircraft, you overstress the aircraft as you're trying to recover, and or you overspeed the aircraft, or a combination of the two. And typically, what happens is a portion, one portion of the aircraft will fail, and that will cause other portions of the aircraft to fail. So I suspect it probably failed at the tail first, and then the right wing outer portion failed. These parts that were missing off of the aircraft were located a half a mile to three quarters of a mile away from the main wreckage, so not too very far apart. There is an excellent uh, ear witness account, because it was too foggy to see, too snowy, dark, ear witness ac account of what happened. And which brings up the point, if you are a witness to any of these accidents, to contact the NTSB and give them your first-hand information. The NTSB will not go looking for you for what during one of these after one of these crashes. They're going to uh, need you to contact them. So it's what is it here? It's eyewitness, no correction, it's witness at ntsb.gov. Witness at ntsb.gov if you have any information regarding this particular accident or if you're around and witness any sort of accident. Now, Bruce Landsberg is one of the more senior guys at the NTSB, so this accident has their attention. He mentioned right away that this is the fourth accident from Guardian Flight. They have a fleet of about 60 aircraft operating nationwide, and this is the fourth accident that the NTSB has been involved with in recent years. Remember, we had the King Air off of the coast of Maui not too long ago. Very similar sounding situation, but we don't have... They just finally recovered the aircraft off out of the ocean, and are uh, still investigating that one. There was a accident in Alaska uh, with another Guardian Flight King Air on an instrument approach that fell out of the sky and they were pretty much unable, due to a lack of data, to come to a firm conclusion as to why that aircraft failed to properly fly the instrument approach uh, and crashed out of Alaska. Then there was an incident in Arizona, uh, I believe with another King Air, with a autopilot malfunction where nobody was hurt, but that was became under investigation by the NTSB. So four recent events from Guardian Flight has got the NTSB's attention. They also stress the point that this aircraft has no cockpit voice recorder or data recorder, and the NTSB has been after the FAA to get these rules changed that if you're going to operate a part 135 aeromedical operation they should have a rule requirement requiring this data be on board these aircraft there may be some of this data on the avionics but a dedicated cbr and or data recorder on these aircraft without the data you can't find out the cause of these accidents looking at the flight looking at the crash history of the platus pc-12 on uh, the aviation safety database there's about 119 accidents regarding the PC-12. Only 22 of those are fatal. Many of those fatal accidents involve spatial disorientation and loss of control of the aircraft in instrument conditions. And looking at those 
accidents. I see two of them back in 2012 that did involve some sort of structural failure of the aircraft during a loss of control situation while in IMC. So this is not the first time a PC-12 has suffered some form of in-flight structural failure during an over G, a severe over G or over speeding of the aircraft due to loss of control in instrument conditions. A uh, couple of questions in the comment section there. Great comments overall on the first uh, video. Uh, as far as the aircraft being needing to be de-iced, no, this aircraft lives inside the hangar at Atlantic Aviation. So this aircraft came out of the hangar dry, and so uh, that is not a factor in this accident. Regarding pilot, the possibility of pilot incapacitation, this flight, I believe, was only about 14 minutes long. They only got up, just got up to 19,000 feet. So being a depressurization sort of situation, this doesn't appear to be the case. Usually in a pilot uh, incapacitation situation sort of that, the aircraft uh, just remains on autopilot and continues ahead straight ahead. So that does not appear to be the case. Though, I would argue that spatial disorientation is a form of pilot incapacitation. And again, if you've never experienced it, you have no idea how powerful this incapacitation is. If you have experienced, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Witness, uh, witness at ntsb.gov. If you heard anything over there at Stagecoach Nevada, let them know. Thanks so much for your support. See you here.